Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Carlo, you've been buying rental properties with very little of your own money. How's everything been working out so far? Uh, it's It's been going good. I mean, over the years, we've, we've built out... Uh, our portfolio with, with a burst strategy, but you know, it, it comes with challenges, you know, dealing with contractors and, and, uh, potential overruns on, on budgeting. And, um, so it, it, everyone talks about the, the burst strategy saying it's, it's, uh, you know, the way to go, but there, there are caveats, but if you build processes around it, it can, uh, certainly help you scale. Carlo has built a rental portfolio of over 40 doors using very little of his own money. And the great thing is he's done all this while working his full-time job. And on the podcast today, we're going to figure out how he's doing this. We'll take a look at the types of properties he's buying, the neighborhoods that they're in. We'll also take a look at some of the problems that he's had along the way. He's had issues with contractors and property managers, and we'll figure out how he's overcome those issues. And we're also going to talk about why he's buying rentals. Most investors are buying rentals for cash flow. And so is Carlo, but he's also buying rentals for four other reasons. So we'll take a look at that. Joining us on the show today from Pittsburgh is Carlo Fanati. We'll take a really quick break to thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll talk to Carlo. It's a lot of work to find a really good rental property. And when you actually find that property, you want to make sure you're working with a lender that can get that loan closed. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender, and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of loan programs, and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more or you're ready to get started today, just go to RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com, NMLS 42056. A good deal on a rental property isn't going to last very long. To win properties today, you need to move quickly when a deal comes on the market, but it takes time to analyze a property. I want to let you know about an app where you can analyze deals on your phone in seconds. It's called Ask Rick. That's R-I-C for Rental Income Calculator. You can analyze a deal with the push of a button. You can figure out the rent, your mortgage payment, your expenses, and figure out the cash flow. If the numbers make sense, you can make an offer right there on the app, or you can send a calendar invite to your agent to see the property in person. Ask Rick is currently offering a free seven-day trial. Just search for Ask Rick in the App Store or go to Just Ask Rick. That's R-I-C, JustAskRick.com. Rental Income Podcast. Carlo, so why don't we start off talking about your portfolio? Can you tell me what your portfolio looks like? Sure, it's uh, it's a mix of uh, multi units and single family homes uh, over the greater Pittsburgh area, and we're just over uh, forty units today. And what kind of neighborhoods are the properties in? Uh, it's a mix of areas. Um, I would say for the listeners, there it's you you'd probably consider it a C plus to B area. Okay, and so you you've got a mix of properties. It, why is that? Like, do, do you find that like you buy different properties for different reasons or when you find a deal, if the numbers work, then it's a deal. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's looking for opportunity in certain market segments. And, uh, if, if it pencils out and it's in your geographic area, I mean, it's, it's, it's an opportunity that you like to go after. So that's been pretty much how we've been growing it. Uh, long term, you know, and speaking to a, a lot of different people out there, you know, they explain that you should consolidate and, and sell properties off as you as you grow your portfolio and, and try to get as many units under one roof. Um, but I've also talked to some other investors as well, and, and they state that you know you, you can still do very well with your single family homes and, and duplexes and, and three units and. Sure. If you buy them at the right price. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a good thing to keep in mind. And I, I kind of like the idea of having single families because they're they're easy to sell. So if you get into a tight spot and you have to sell off a property, sometimes it can be a lot easier to sell a single family than it is a duplex or a fourplex. So I, I think I think that's a good idea. Correct. 
Um, and then also, you know, sometimes you might see more appreciation on a single family. Um, you know, d- duplexes or fourplexes, I mean, usually you're going to sell them to an investor. And as investors, we're all looking for deals and we want something where the numbers are going to work. So it's um, it, it can be more challenging sometimes in a different market. Um, so I, tell me about your strategy. Like, why are you buying rentals? Like, what's your long term plan? I, I think like a lot of the listeners out there, I mean, it's it's building a, a long term portfolio to, to be able to maximize one's freedom as, as they get older. Mm-hmm. Um, and, in in it essentially pays you in different ways where other investments you're, you're putting money maybe into the market or some other investment, it's going to return X where, um, you know, real estate can pay you in five different ways. Yeah. The, you know, that's a good point. Yeah. A lot of times we just think about the cash flow that that's why we're buying rental properties, but yeah, let's talk about the different ways that you can get paid by rental properties. Like, what are what are the other ways? You also you know capture equity. So if you if you buy a property, you know for the right price, you should cap capture some equity. You could be paying at full market price, uh, but most of the times you might be paying slightly below market. So you're capturing some equity on the buy. It's going to depreciate in today's market. In a hyperinflated environment, uh, the appreciation is going to be pretty fast. Um, so it's going to appreciate uh, pretty well over a period. Uh, principal pay down as you put your debt in place to, to buy the property. Some people are doing with cash. That's great if you're in that position, but a lot of folks will buy with debt. So you have a percentage of, of principal pay down per year. You have your tax advantages with passive losses and depreciation and other aspects that you can use within um, the real estate market. And then obviously, uh, going back to inflation, uh, you know, inflation for the appreciation side, but inflation hedging is, is, is huge right now. Um, and with the, the hyperinflation that's been underway, it's good to own tangible physical assets. Yeah. You know, it, it really is interesting to hear you point all those different ways out because it, we really don't think about all that stuff. And it, it's kind of funny on the podcast for, yeah, I've been doing this now for almost eight years. And for the first three years, appreciation was a dirty word. I mean, like nobody <laughs> would say appreciation. Um, and, and I think that was because of the financial crisis that what we had come out of and and how people didn't see appreciation. And inflation hedge is something that no one ever thought of until we started seeing a lot of inflation over the last year or so. So, um, yeah, it, it, that that is interesting to to think about all the different ways that, that, that you get paid. Um, so when you're, when you're working with, um, contractors, like, have you had a lot of trouble trying to find people? Cause like, you, you're buying properties that are, that are kind of run down, right? That that's kind of your strategy. But most of the time. I mean, if, if that's what the, if, that, if that's what the market has out there in today's market, it's, it's been that way. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've had, to uh, you know, find contractors and third parties to be able to help in, in that rehab endeavor. So, uh, you know, always have a contract in place of the deliverables on, on what's going to be c- completed. Is materials going to be inc- concluded? Is it just labor? Um, make sure that you, you review the contract with the contractor and, and investor. Sometimes just a disconnect on what's written on paper. So make sure everyone's clear and it's clear on paper make sure everyone signs and dates it and it's a, it becomes a legal binding contract at that point in time. And then just pay the contractor as work completes. Uh, first week of work completes, you can pay a, you know, a small percentage of, you know, whatever you decided on, on what that project would be. And you can pay that person weekly. A lot of folks don't understand like contractors have to take money for their living. They have to pay subcontractors. They may potentially use, so they have cash flow constraints as long as the, the project's bidded, it's bid correctly and they get paid along along the way it usually works out well for all parties so are you managing the properties yourself or do you have a property manager no it's they're all third party managed um at 40 units a little bit above um usually a lot of folks i've spoke to <clears throat> usually don't bring management in to till about 80 units uh unless someone's doing a full time you could do it smaller but um you know, I, I still work uh, a daytime job, so I, I, there's no way I can deal with management. So it's 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 handed over to a third party manager, and they, they do all the 
redos, tenant turns, and fix-ups. So your, do you look at your job in your business, your, your rental business, as it's to find properties and manage the rehabs, and then once it's managed, you're going to hand it over to the property manager, and then it really shouldn't take too much of your time? Correct. It's a little bit of uh, work each month, but it, it starts to get into more of a passive model. And, and if and if you buy a property and you rehab it, your your expense ratio and your capital that has to be put in the property downstream is much less because you may have updated the electrical and the plumbing and the roof and the typical items that that break. Um, so that also helps your your financial model, and it also makes it more of a a passive um, product because really the property management company is only doing uh, tenant turns, <clears throat> new flooring and paint and things of that nature. No major rehabs. So, I mean, it, it's really kind of awesome. And this is why I love rentals is that you do some work up front to find the property, to analyze the property, to get the property rehabbed. But then once it's up, it, it's going to pay you passive income every month for the rest of your life or as long as you own the property. That's the plan for yeah. sure. Yeah. With uh, building out your portfolio, you've done mostly burrs. Have you ever thought about buying a property that maybe didn't need much work? Or are you just able to create so much equity by fixing the property up that it, it just wouldn't make sense to, for you to do it any other way? Um, we had the opportunity to buy one or two, but in today's marketplace, um, you know, a, a decent property is going for almost over what it's really worth. Uh, due to the inflated environment. So, um, you know, rehab projects or value add opportunities is the way to really capture one of those items that I was saying about equity capture or, you know, making financial models work a little bit better. Buying value add properties is, is how you can potentially buy something low, rehab it, get your money back and, and repurpose that capital. So, now, what about financing? How do you have your your properties financed? Sure, yeah. Basically, as we grew um, the, the overall real estate portfolio, we, we acquired individual properties, multi-units or single families. And there were single loans on, on, on those properties. And then as the market appreciated after so many years, we decided to refinance a, a certain amount of those properties, in this case, let's say six. Um, and we took those six properties and, and put that into one loan. And then you're able to pull out some of that equity across those six loans that becomes one loan payment. And then you have the equity on top now that you can, you can go and repurpose and buy other properties with that. And it's important to understand the recycling of and refinancing of, of a, of a portfolio. If you have so many properties, oh, so many years as that equity builds up, Certain investors are avid about paying everything down and paying everything off. That is one way of doing it because then you have no debt payments and your cash flow is increased substantially. A lot of people who are in growth or hyper growth mode will wait every so many years, usually towards the five uh, year reset, commercial loans reset at five years. And then the, obviously the interest rates are going to be going up. So after five years, they may have, let's say, $200,000 in equity across their portfolio they can refinance, pull that equity out, and then go and buy other properties. So that's how a lot of folks, once they get up to a certain size, continue to to buy and grow organically because they can pull capital out of, of the overall portfolio because they gain so much equity in five to 10 years. And then you can take that money, repurpose it, either into some capital upgrades or going and buying additional properties. But you have to really look at what are your rents in five years? How much did they go up? Um, do you want to put a lot of debt load on it or do you want to pay, continue to pay down your properties? There's, there's multiple schools of thought on that. Um, it depends if you're in the Dave Ramsey camp or if you're in the hyper growth kind of PE minded set where you're in, in your own mind, you want to continue to put debt on it and continue to, to grow the overall program. There's no right or wrong right. answer. I, I know some folks that have certain properties paid off and, and others where they continue to recycle that, uh, money. In their por portfolio. Does it, like so, you you mentioned that that the the rate will reset after five years, and being in an, an environment where the rates are going up now, 
and it, who knows what will they'll be in in five years? I mean, they could come back down at some point. Like we we just don't know. But like, does it concern you at all that your payment could be a lot higher? And maybe if rents don't go up, maybe you could be squeezed a little bit. Well, I think every investor is uh, faced with that uh, when you go through when you go through the uh, growth journey. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're you're taking out debt to buy properties. But I mean, if you if you look at historical averages over five, 10, 15 years, rents are going to go up. Rents were not what they were in 2000 compared mm-hmm. to 2022. Um, so they're going to organically continue to rise. Um, yeah, cash flow could get pinched in five years a little bit, but you, you are going to offset that a little bit with rent increases. I don't think there'll be inflation and not have increases because rent increases is going to be part of inflation. Uh, I think we're going to see uh, a reset coming. I, I, we've saw the, the market bubbling pretty strong now for, for 10 years. And obviously we printed money. The fed has to increase rates to stamp down on the inflation underway. That is going to have some sort of economic impact. And what that is, uh, the economists are still trying to figure it out, but I mean, any, any of the investors we've been talking about it, and we saw them. The Fed announced it a couple times. You saw the whole stock market obviously shutter, crypto crashed a bit, uh, and I think we're going to see more of that over the upcoming six to twelve months. And the Fed's going to. They said the Fed was going to increase by a whole point in 2022 uh, to to come down on inflation, but I think it's going to go past even a. I think it's going to go past 1% uh, increase in, in 2022, which could mean a rush into the real estate market is, is what I'm assuming will happen in spring this year because people are going to try to get that lower rate. And I think the market's going to finally cool off and we're going to see a lot more inventory come online and probably the latter half of summer and the fall of next year as rates even go up higher. And, you know, I, I guess in your case specifically, the, uh, I'm just – kind of thinking this through here that if the worst case did happen where the rates go up and your mortgage payment ends up going higher and say for whatever reason rents didn't go up or maybe they went down your properties i assume are probably still profitable so like you might not just be as profitable so it's not it's not going to take you down is it no. no, I mean, th- remember, in a five-year reset, the, the rate can only go up so much percent. It's not going to uh, triple. Um, you know, there's there's rate limit uh, on the interest rate that the bank set. So, um, you know, th- it's it's definitely going to go up. And, and then if you build your model, and, I, and I, I know a lot of people are doing this, and I'm doing it as well now, everyone is underwriting to a more aggressive rate, right? You don't build your 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 models when you're when you're looking to buy at today's rate you're uh, I, i'm building it to to increase by you know two and a half percent just so it, you can support a a higher percentage and that is what is going to drive down uh real estate and put put more inventory on because folks are going to wait and that means more product is going to come online at some point I, i'm anticipating you know q3 this year it could be 2023 for all we know um but uh not too long ago six and a half percent was a great rate right that's true <laughs> in that's the true. early 80s 12 percent was a great rate right <laughs> so let's let's hope we don't see that right exactly exactly but yeah i mean i think rents are going to keep up and um yeah I, I really don't think you have much to worry about and the other thing too is you've got a full-time job so like even if Correct. something really bad happened and, and you had crazy vacancy and crazy expenses and your mortgage was up. Like, I, I think you would probably be able to kick in a little bit of money if you had to. Yeah. I, I just think that's, you have to, um, when you, when you do your modeling and, and, and you're doing your budgeting, you, you have to do it at a, as conservative as possible. Uh, and to your point, always, you know, it's all about being liquid and make sure you have enough liquidity uh, to, to weather a storm. Uh, anybody that has debt on real estate is always, you know, at some point concerned about, uh, you know, tightening on, on, on gross rents and, and obviously, uh, you know, just increase in interest rates. Any of these variables could affect 
uh, the real estate market. Um, and, and it's not just residential, it'll be commercial and uh, much larger uh, spaces too. So I don't think we're going to see a 2008, 2010 impact kind of w- what transpired, but I think we're going to see interest rates go up a couple points. I think we're going to see a pullback on the, the prices of, of, of real estate, which is kind of the which is needed and not needed. I mean, obviously we all want it to appreciate, but you don't want it to appreciate too fast. And that's why the Fed has to increase the interest rates. I don't like it like the next person, but no one likes inflation outside of its typical boundary because that means that's a barometer for other problems in our economic system. Uh, and uh, it could be, you know, you know, increased uh, job or decrease in jobs uh, you know, increase financial pressure on businesses because they're they're growing with debt too. So we're so focused on real estate. Uh, a lot of businesses use debt, big businesses, small businesses. So uh, increase in interest rates affects everything. Um, and we're going to see a little bit, bit of that. But for us and, and for real estate, I think we're going to see inventory come on. So it could be a, a, a buy opportunity uh, at the latter half of, of this year. Here's something to keep in mind is that everybody is in a different situation. Everybody has a different level of risk and you've got to decide what's right for you. For Carlo in his situation, he was comfortable having a commercial mortgage and he's comfortable knowing that the rate could adjust in five years. For me in my situation, I'm not comfortable with that. I want to know that my payment is going to be fixed and that my rate isn't going to adjust either up or down. I know that for the next 30 years, my rates are going to be the same. You've got to decide what's right for you. And it it could be that you're comfortable with that risk, or it could be that you're like me and you want to have a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. And if you do want to have a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, the lender that I recommend is our sponsor today. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. Chaley is a nationwide lender, and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of different loan programs, and one of her newest programs, which I think is pretty cool, is she has a no-doc loan where she doesn't need any pay stubs from you. She doesn't need bank statements doesn't need tax returns, doesn't matter if you're self-employed. All she's all she's looking at is the deal. She wants to see if the numbers make sense. If they do, and if the property cash flows, she'll give you a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage. Now, the rates are going to be a little bit higher, but it's still a great deal. If you want some more information, just reach out to Chaley at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R I D G E. LendingGroup.com, NMLS42056. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast today. If this is your first time here, make sure you follow the show. We put out new episodes every single Tuesday. And if you follow the show, you'll get notified as soon as new episodes come out. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.